All right, um, I'm Alexander Smith. I'm a biomedical engineering and computer science double major representing St. Louis University. And this is an automated image guided pedicle screw placement using a commercial robot. So just a little bit of background on spinal fusion surgery. Um, typically around uh, half a million spinal fusions occur each year. And uh, incidence is on the rise with about a 70% increase uh, in uh, new cases between 2001 and 2011. Um, typically these surgeries last about two to three hours, but they can last as long as seven hours. And they're also extremely invasive and they require a long recovery time. And as you can see in the right image, uh, typically pedicle screws are placed in between the pedicles and the spinous process. And um, they're placed in usually on both sides of the spine. And then rods are used to connect uh, different vertebrae together in this procedure. So um, today there are a lot of navigation devices used to assist with this procedure. Um, so there's the Rosso device, Mazor, and Globus. And what's interesting about these devices is all of them do surgical navigation, but the physician actually has to go in and place the screw. So what we decided to do was create a study around actually automating that screw placement procedure using a KUKA EVA R800 robot and 3D slicer, which is open source software. And the two major goals for this uh, procedure were uh, develop a fully automated placement system for pedicle screws, <coughs> and also assess the accuracy of the entry points, destination points, and angulation for each of those screws. So a little bit of background on the robot. Um, it was designed by KUKA as a collaborative robot, which means it comes with special features like collision detection, hand-guided motion, and also uh, programmable force and torque limits. And uh, all of those will be used in this uh, procedure. On top of that, it's very repeatable um, with about 100 micron repeatability, and you can place a tool uh, repeatably within about 0 0.03 degrees. Um, so next what we did was we um, set up some bovine femurs to act as our, um, to act as our spine in this case. Um, so we needed four fiducial markers on each of these. Uh, you can see the three in the front, there's also one hidden behind the bone. Um, and then what we did was we used a CRM CT to capture uh, the image of this, and then DICOM files from that CT image were uh, imported into our 3D slicer software. From there, we uh, planned our procedure to place screws. Uh, we were gonna place two screws per bone, and uh, what we needed to do was take those uh, markers and actually uh, find them and place fiducial markers in the software on each of those. And then we placed additional fiducial markers in uh, two entry and two destination points uh, so that we could uh, test screw placement. And from there, uh, points were imported into the robot environment manually. We actually had to type the uh, points into the robot code so that we uh, knew where they were. So next what we did was we used uh, the, the hand guiding uh, motion that I was talking about to uh, find those points in the robot's space. So um, we actually went and guided the robot to each of these four locations, and then as you can see in this video, um, we're capturing those right there. So next, I wanted to talk a little bit about the registration algorithm we used. It's a non-iterative, rigid point set registration. Uh, so this means we actually had to collect our points in order. So what we did was we found the center mass of the point cloud for the robot space, and then another uh, center mass for the point cloud in the CT image in 3D slicer. And those corresponding points were associated um, and create, we created a correspondence matrix using those. And then we took the de singular value decomposition of the correspondence matrix. And then from there, uh, there's a theorem that states when you take the SVD, uh, you can create a rotation matrix uh, using the outer matrices, using the product of the outer matrices. Then you can translate by um, taking the center mass minus the rotated center mass of your second point set. So um, these were the four tools that we used in this procedure. First off, the registration tool that you already saw. Next, we used an awl to create a little divot to guide <coughs> our drill into uh, the location that we were gonna place the screw. And then finally, we used the screwdriver and then we placed deck screws to assess the, uh, to assess the location for each of the screws that we placed. So as you can see in these videos, um, so the uh, drilling procedure was done after awling. And you can see the drill going in and actually uh, making this hole for the uh, screw to be placed. And then from there, the screw was uh, picked up by the robot using uh, the screwdriver tool and then uh, actually placed into the bone. And these tools needed to be replaced manually uh, during this procedure, but um, that's something that we plan on automating in the future. Next, we had to re-image the bones. So what we did was we took the bones with the screws in them and re-imaged them in the CRM CT. And then we imported these bones again into 3D Slicer, and then we identified the entry and destination locations uh, without 
without a registration first so that we weren't uh, blind. So that essentially was blind and we weren't, um, we weren't skewing our data at all by seeing the actual producials. And then from there, we registered the bone to the, uh, the final bone to the initial bone and measured the uh, distance in the air for the, uh, for the screw entry and destination locations. And um, so our results, we had nine screws placed in bone. We had one failure that resulted from bone shift because the vise was not uh, clamped down hard enough on the bone. So um, our main entry point error was approximately a millimeter. Our destination error was about two millimeters and our angulation error was approximately three degrees. And um, these, are typical, this, these are typical for the actual procedure used um, used by those other devices, such as the Mazor, which I talked about earlier. So in conclusion, we discussed, uh, we described how accurate, repeatable, and dependable screw placement can be automated with collaborative robotics. What's really interesting about this is no uh, external surgical navigation system was used. This was all done with the robot's uh, control system, and uh, the accuracy approach is what currently exists on the market today. So some future work, uh, we have a lot of plans for this. Um, we plan on creating machined and sterilizable tooling designed specifically for pedicle screws. We also plan on automating our tool exchange procedure and then um, to get rid of the manual and typing in the uh, coordinates in the robot's code, we want to incorporate software called IGT Link into 3D Slicer so that we can communicate back and forth between our robot and that open source software. And then uh, two future studies we were planning on. Um, we're planning on testing the placement accuracy using actual pedicle screws with those machined tools. And then we're also eventually planning on uh, setting up cadaver and human feasibility studies with this project. So I'd like to acknowledge my PI, Dr. Andrew Hall, as well as St. Louis University's Parks College of Aviation, Aviation Engineering and Technology. And uh, are there any questions? <coughs> So I actually have a shout out to Spinal Surgeons, uh, a previous winner. So you mentioned that you, one of your failures was due to the movement of the, uh, the, of the specimen like in the clamp. Mm -hmm. Do you see that like, being an issue possibly with actual human subjects? Like, for example, I've seen some patients even in anesthesia, 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 they still like still movement or even during the surgery they end up moving the patient? Yeah, so that's, that's absolutely a concern. And we are uh, planning on actually incorporating some type of in-operation uh, imaging modality to be able to uh, assess whether the patient has moved in, uh, during the procedure. So um, we, we were at a conference in Boston and we met up with someone who actually has uh, technology that would be perfect for that. So we're planning on incorporating that at some point soon too. So in this case, the bone was isolated from the human body, but in actuality, the spine is just do you feel like you have any plans to be able to 3D image that spine within the human body and get as clean of a result as you did with the bone isolated from the body? Um, so in terms of the CT image quality? Yeah. Um, so the image quality is enough so that we'd be able to uh, have a little bit of leeway with the, uh, with the actual bone placement. So um, you're given about two millimeters of accuracy in your entry point to be able to successfully place this and we were able to do uh, that accuracy so far, but um, we'd obviously have to do more trials to be able to see whether or not that would work in like, a cadaver, for example. Okay, I think we'll have